Good morning. My name is Brian Neff, and I am an optimist. I'm an optimist because the manner that we design and manufacture tomorrow will be much better than the way that we design and manufacture today. I speak of the coming of additive manufacturing, also known as 3D printing. 3D printing is not only more cost effective and faster than traditional methods, it's more environmentally friendly in two important ways. And I'd like to, to take my time with you today to talk about those two ways. First, it allows for parts to be optimized in a computer, optimized for performance, optimized for environmental impact, parts that can't be manufactured via traditional methods because they're too difficult. And second, it allows for those same parts to be manufactured in a way that is much more environmentally friendly than traditional methods of manufacturing. Additive manufacturing is already changing manufacturing as we know it today, and I believe over the next 20 years, it will have an amazingly positive impact on the entire $12 trillion global manufacturing footprint from an environmental standpoint. I run a company here in Hollywood, Florida that additively manufactures or 3D prints parts for commercial aerospace applications. And if there's ever been an industry that needs to proactively adopt and embrace the e environmental benefits of additive manufacturing, it is the commercial aviation industry, which for years has been accused of turning a deaf ear to issues of climate change and issues uh, related to its own carbon dioxide emissions. It's gotten to the point where recently, within the last few months, people have actually asked whether it's immoral to fly on an aircraft or immoral to have parts shipped via air cargo. Well, I don't think it's immoral, but I do think it's immoral to not proactively adopt as fast as you can a superior technology that has a much better environmental footprint which is additive manufacturing. But before I get into these benefits specifically, maybe I should take a step back and answer the question, what is additive manufacturing? What is 3D printing? What does it mean? It's been in the vernacular for a few years, and many people have heard it, but not many people have actually understood what it means. And in a nutshell, it is the process by which a raw material is transformed into a final finished or near finished part in a single step with minimal waste through the gradual addition of layers of material. In my business, the process that we use is called powder bed fusion, where the raw material, which is metal powder, is loaded into a build chamber and melted by a layer, by, by a laser, in consecutive layers. After one layer is melted, a recoder arm pushes another layer of powder over the top of that melted layer, and the laser melts the next layer, over and over and over and over again until the part is finished and removed from the build chamber and sent on to the end customer. The great advantage of this process is that it is fairly limitless with design. You, you can build anything that you can, you can see in a computer screen in one of these chambers, and that's pretty revolutionary. I'm always amazed when we optimize parts because we live in a world of data and a world of great computer systems that can optimize that data and tell you what you want and what the perfect part's going to look like on a computer screen. And these parts, when I look at them on a computer screen, they look very natural. They look very organic. Uh, traditional manufacturing has a lot of hard edges and straight lines and excess waste. But additive manufacturing and, and parts that have been optimized for additive manufacturing look natural. They look like they were grown. They look organic. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. And as good as our traditional methods of manufacturing are, they're still not as good to manufacture something as simple or as strong as a spider web. But additive manufacturing can. And this leads me to the first and probably greatest benefit from an environmental standpoint of additive manufacturing. And that is the ability to design parts that have improved performance and improved environmental impact. And I'd like to give you an example from my company. Most of you have probably flown on a 767. It has two engines. And at the back of each of those engines, there's 12 of these brackets on each engine. In the history of commercial aviation, this bracket has gone unnoticed. Nobody's ever cared about it, but we decided to use it as an experiment, so hopefully people can start caring about it. We looked at this and we said, you know, we see excess uh, wall thickness, we see excess corners. It doesn't look like it should be optimized for what it does. So we took it and we said, we're going to run an experiment on this. We're going to see what this part should look like. And we scanned it 
We ran it through really, really high-tech uh, 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 optimization software, and we printed it. And it looked like this. Very, very different approach. Very organic. But what was amazing to us is when we tested it. Not only was this part 20% lighter than the previous part, or about 30 grams, which is about an ounce, it was actually about 50% more durable than the previous part when we tested it on a test rig. This is an absolutely revolutionary concept for aviation and has a direct environmental impact. Uh, and I'll give you a little bit of an example why. According to a, uh, a consulting firm affiliated with Airbus, for every kilogram of weight that is saved off of a fleet of 600 aircraft, which is kind of the typical size of a traditional large fleet, that one kilogram of weight that's saved over the course of a year will reduce fuel consumption by 24,000 gallons. And it will reduce carbon dioxide emissions by 250 tons, one kilogram over the course of a year. So my little part, which was just an experiment that we just decided to run on this, those 30 grams extrapolated out through that same program will save something like 720 gallons of fuel a year. But what gets me excited is this was just this was just an experiment. This, this was just something we did to see we, if we could do it. But take that mindset and apply it across the tens of thousands of parts that exist on each airframe and engine out there today. And that is truly revolutionary to me. And that is the benefit of additive manufacturing. Probably the first and most important. But the second one is also important too, and it's one that people haven't thought of. Traditional manufacturing methods are often older and, and, and pollutive and dirty and wasteful. Additive is none of those things. We talk of additive manufacturing starting from nothing and growing into a final part. That's very different than subtractive, where you start with a big, say, a big piece of metal and you whittle it down into a final part. This is an example of waste material from a subtractive machining process. Our process is nothing like this. We estimate that our waste is, we're 80% less wasteful than some, a process like this, because in our process, when a part comes out of the build chamber, the powder that's not used is sieved and reloaded into the next build. And we can use about 90% of the powder uh, over the course of, a, of, a, of, a, of its life, basically. Uh, this is a very different approach to traditional methods of manufacturing. Another area of, of manufacturing that I like to pick on is casting. Now, casting has been an important part of human evolution. It's a 7,000-year-old technology. In fact, it's so important to humanity that they named an entire age after it, the Bronze Age, where people melted copper in tin to form bronze. But like any ancient technology, it's dirty, it's smoky, it's hot, it's wasteful. Uh, additive is none of those things. And if you sort of compare the process side to side, you can see what happened 7,000 years ago is very similar in many ways to what's happening today, but additive is completely different. Additive looks like it, it occurs in a uh, almost surgical environment, whereas casting is old and it's hot and it's dirty. A casting is also a, a smokestack business. It's a, it's, a, it's a dirty business. Many people don't know this, but according to a University of Massachusetts study from 2013, the number one air polluter in the country was a casting house. And if you look at the profile of what a casting house looks like versus an additive house, it's, it's quite stark. And I challenge you to say, what happens when we replace what's on the left with what's on the right? And that also will have a very, very profound environmental impact on manufacturing as we go forward. So, where does this leave us? I said at the beginning of this, the talk that I am an optimist. And I am an optimist. Because additive manufacturing is here. But the extent to which it's adopted and the speed to which it's adopted is up to all of us. Because I don't think that the true benefit of additive is really going to be making parts that fly in today's aircraft better. The benefit of additive manufacturing is a complete redesign of the entire aircraft. Not just the airframe, but also the engine. I believe that with the designless, design free uh, benefits of additive, we will see a hybrid commercial jet engine by 2030 one that uses jet fuel to take off and climb and then switches over to an electric engine to do uh, cruise and descent and a fully electric jet engine by 2040. I think that can only happen via additive where you can try and fail and try and fail and try and fail until you can succeed. 
That's what additive brings, but it's up to all of us to first be aware that there is a better way to manufacture that's out there and to demand that the airlines that we fly and the companies with which we interact with adopt this technology because there is a better way to manufacture and to design, and it's here now, and the future is very bright. Thank you very much.